India derives its name from the River Indus. Through countless centuries, the way into India has been by the mountain passes of the northwest. And by this route, India has been invaded again and again. And so it's not surprising that we find a great many relics of past conquests in the north and west of India today. Ancient monuments, forts and palaces, whose styles remind us of the Persian and Mohammedan origins of their builders. But this northwestern region is not typical. We must travel many miles to get a true balanced picture of this great and varied country. To the traveler by rail, India appears to be one vast plain. In fact, the Indian peninsula is by no means all flat. There is a great mountain wall in the north, the great chain of the Himalayas, the highest mountains in the world. They swing in a smooth, unbroken curve for 1,500 miles, cutting India off almost completely from the rest of Asia. There is the great lowland plain, more than 2,000 miles from end to end, through which flow the great rivers Indus, Ganges and Brahmaputra. And there is the great plateau, embracing all India south of the lowland plain. This plateau is flanked by a narrow coastal strip and is broken by mountains here and there. Mountains such as the Nilgiris, 